How to YouTube. So I was originally planning to film this outside, but anyways, um, today I'm gonna show you my OpenBSD install. And I guess the first part about installing OpenBSD on any sort of hardware is making the hardware. So I decided to use this uh, system I originally built for a Debian slash uh, Windows 98 install. So it was originally a T43P, but a lot of the T43Ps have uh, dead NVIDIA chips. So I decided to pretty much just take it completely apart mostly and uh, swap some stuff around. So the uh, T43P motherboard and T42 are actually compatible even on the 15 inch model. It's like the T60, they have a little spreader thing. So I just swapped the motherboards around, put in an SSD, and then later a second SSD for the dual installation. Um, and after that, I was uh, pretty much complete with the thing. And I didn't really do a lot with the Windows 98 install, so I figured, uh, and Debian was a bit slow, let's try BSD on it. Okay, a little interlude about BSDs. I've said this before a long time ago, but pretty much the main big ones, I guess there's Dragonfly BSD, but I never tried that, are FreeBSD, uh, OpenBSD, and NetBSD. So, FreeBSDs kinda, I would say, closer to the Debian of BSDs. Like, most of the packages are pretty similar, it's not hard to figure out. The installer's uh, probably the best out of all of them in terms of appearance, even though um, I, am, I do kind of uh, like the Encursus style of uh, the NetBSD installer, but NetBSD is pretty much designed to run on any platform, like any architecture, lowest system specs, and things like that. I was originally going to do a NetBSD on a 486 system video, but uh, I have had issues getting a 486 system to work, and anyways though, uh, even though it does have a lower RAM requirement, uh, and FreeBSD is probably what you'd want to use if you're like just needing a desktop. Uh, I want to use a BSD instead of Linux, but the most uh, curious one to me, or intriguing, I guess is the correct word, is OpenBSD. So OpenBSD is security focused. It ha doesn't quite have as low requirements as NetBSD, and it has some cool features like running on old PowerPC 32-bit platforms. So let's uh, get into the uh, OpenBSD installation. Okay, so I guess the first thing you want to do when you try out a new operating system or a new system in general is you want to install the packages you want. I installed HTOP and this is kind of just going to be a demonstration of how the package manager works. So let's say I don't want HTOP anymore. I could type in package delete and the slash r function in package delete will delete the dependencies for that package automatically. But in this case, uh, I'm probably not going to use it because I can't imagine HTOP being a very package intensive program. So you do have to be root, and then all you have to do is type in package delete HTOP. So let's say um, I want to add HTOP again. So what do I have to do? Well, first, uh, let's see if there are different variants to the HTOP package. So let me type in package info slash q htop and this will pretty much work like apt uh, cache search. It will just tell me the exact packages that have htop in it and from there I can see which version I want to install. So in this case I am just going to install the normal htop package so I just type in package at htop takes a little bit to download and uncompress, but once that's done, the binary is there. So, yeah, that's pretty much how you install packages. So, 
When you first get into an OpenBSD system, I would imagine, unless you're fine using the default Windows Manager, which I am not a huge fan of, you can, uh, you probably want to install some of your own packages. I installed i3 GAPS, for example. Okay, so what if there's no Ethernet jack? You're one of those unfortunate souls that has your lock computer that doesn't have an Ethernet jack, and you still need those packages. Well, don't be afraid because configuring Wi-Fi on OpenBSD since about 2018 is really easy. So, first the slash etc folder has the host names files. And if you look at EM0, which is the Ethernet device, if you want the normal devices, you can just type in if config, it just says DHCP. And next we're gonna look at IWI0 which is Wi-Fi. So the first thing is it says join, then the name of the network, which is in this case ATT3, okay, ignore that. But anyways, uh, type of encryption, which is WPA key, and then the password, pretty simple. So below it, I'm having it set up DHCP, which is fine for this, it's not a server, INET6 auto config, and up. So that's, Pretty much how you do it, and if you want to have multiple networks, you just add them below the line for the first network. So it's like uh, join this, this, and that, and then you have a work network, and it's join, you know, work, or something like that, and then, you know, WPA, or whatever encryption, then the password. So, pretty simple. Okay, so now that you have internet, and now that you have so many packages installed, I think the first one I installed was Vim. Uh, it comes with VI though. So let's uh, get into a little bit of how to set up Zorg. So the first thing is there's a little X sessions file. There's also a universal X sessions file, but we're just gonna take a quick look at the normal X sessions file for the user, in this case trip code. So let's just go into X session and I just wrote exec i3 just like if I was on Debian. And the next thing after that you might want to configure is some of the I guess uh, XE no DM, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that files, but the default login manager. So an X setup zero, that's where you can, you know, kind of add a background image, change some of the stuff around. I have um, a line that just changes the default DPI. And the next thing just runs FE, which is, you know, a kind of a background program. I, I use it on my i3 setups for background, but in this case it just loads the same Felix background on startup, which for me was good enough. So I guess like after you edit that file, um, you can just reboot if you want to take a look at your login manager or you know something else similar to that fact. But uh, at this point you got Wi-Fi, you got your Windows Manager, you can just package out of the web browser of your choice, and we're almost at a functional system. We got Vim, comes with CC for compiling, and well, let's go into the last thing, because if you didn't notice, um, the if you install OpenBSD before and don't customize KSH, it uh, is a little bit lacking on display information, such as what directory you're in and things like that. So let's take a look at how to configure KSH. Okay, so most of the stuff in KSH is controlled by what's in your dot profile. So um, in mine, I added one line for PS1 to equal the present work directory, or PWD, and I added an alias for color ls, which is a package you, you're going to have to install if you want ls to have colors. So, and that's how I get my nice little directory over there, and I get my 
little uh, text, but let's say I wanted to change it to Howdy YouTube with a little smiley face, I can do that in the terminal and just type in PS1 equals Howdy YouTube and, you know, I'll just display that. So, the alias for color ls just gives me the colors down there. I mean, there's probably a config file for it, but it works good enough for me in its current form. And in the export line, you're going to have to add PS1 to the list after path, home, and term. Keep in mind, most of this file was auto-generated. I added, I modified three lines, the PS1, alias, and export. So, let's uh, take a look at some other stuff about this because there is one caveat, because this dot profile will work on your normal, uh, terminal, but you're in Zorg, and in this case I'm using URXVT, so uh, let's uh, look at that last config file. By the way, if you're wondering, the default kind of looks like this terminal that I just made by setting the PS1 to like T43, which is like the host name or something. But if you want to get everything working right, you need to go in your X defaults and just add one line to the top which is urxvt login shell true. So after that, your terminal looks a little bit nicer, a bit more functionality there. Your login manager looks nice and you pretty much have a full system. So let me talk about the one bug I ran into, which is kind of annoying, but easily fixable. I am not gonna go greatly in depth on this, but I will kind of just show you, if you type in sysctl, you notice the CPU speed is 2133 megahertz, which is quite nice, but if the set performance value is not 100, it's gonna run at 800 megahertz most of the time. I don't, I think it's just due to my old hardware. I don't know why it did that, but once you actually set the performance variable to the max, you get the full power of your 2004 or five Franken pad. So yeah, I guess uh, that's my video. Um, have a good one, peace, and um, yeah. Good luck if you wanna try an OpenBSD install. Um, I might try this more in the future. I notice it does seem to run a little bit better. I don't know if that's just more due to up-to-date packages. Is Debian is a little bit slow on the package cycle, but I might actually consider switching over to OpenBSD for a bit. Um, so anyways, um, have a good one. Bye, peace.